legacy, tradition, and universal changes plays a huge part in creating new avenues in art, music, and other forms of creative expression. As a powerful example of the impact of the factors on me and my career, I'm going to share the story of my grandfather, Oath in Me. Oath Turner was a fife player, a blues maker, a local legend, and my grandfather. In 2003, he passed, and what I have left of him is the love he gave me, the tradition he left me, his marker on the Mississippi Blues Trail in Como, Mississippi, a sculpture of him, and so much more. Some of you may have known Otha, but for those of you who didn't, you probably don't know what everybody hollering goat means. It's a tradition he started in the late 1950s. He would host Labor Day picnics on his farm in Gravel Spring, Mississippi, each year to provide school clothes and supplies for his children. Otha would butcher a goat from his farm for the food, and his fife and drum band would provide musical entertainment. Everyone from the community would come out to show support, and eventually, his picnic became an event attracting people from all over the world. Some came for the barbecue goat, but for many, it was for the music. Otha Turner was the master of fife and drum. Fife and drum music is an old tradition among black Mississippians. It's a mixture of African rhythms and patterns with Euro-American military style. The big difference is that African-American fife and drum music was not regimented, for an example. Our type of fife and drum is mostly associated right here in the northern Mississippi. It was popular during slavery and through the Civil War. Hundreds of years later, Otha was helping to carry on that tradition. In the early 1970s, he played fife and drum music with Jesse May Hemphill and Abe Young. They called themselves the Mississippi Fife and Drum Corps. They appeared on Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood in 1982. So Otha was really interested in being a fife player, so he formed a band with his grandchildren called the Rising Star. He started playing at the age of 13 after hearing his neighbor, Ari Williams, blowing a fife in his yard. So one day Otha went over and said, Mr. Ari, what is that you're blowing? He said, a fife, son. So Otha asked Ari if he could make him a fife. Ari made Otha his first fife. A fife player typically makes their own fifes from bamboo cane. Otha made my first fife. I made this one. But I mainly played this one, which is Otha's fife. That was the very first song that I learned how to play. I would hang around my granddaddy, watching my brother and cousins play the drums, but I was amazed by the sound of the fife, and I wanted to be involved. So one day I borrowed Otha's fife, and he was not happy with me because I kept it for several days. He finally had to send my cousin down to get it from me. And after that, Otha made a special fife just for me. So I took it, ran home, and started blowing and practicing on it. And in my eyes, I was the master of the fife at that time. <laughs> I would watch my granddaddy Otha play the fife, sitting around him taking notes inside of my head every single day. So one day at one of his family picnics, I told him I wanted to play. So he stopped the drummers, gave me a chance to do my thing. My goal was to be just like my granddaddy. I would stick my fife in my back pocket just like him. Sometimes I would even wear my overalls and boots. As I got older, I would play the fife, the djembe, and sing along with the rising star fife and drum band. Otha was the farmer, but he played fife and drum music to make extra money for his family. 
He created songs that people could sing and dance to. His following grew, and he started performing outside of Mississippi at blues and jazz festivals like Memphis, New Orleans, Chicago, Washington. But in 2003, when he passed, Fife and Drum Music died along with him. And in 1992, Otha was a recipient of the United States government highest honor in folk and national arts, known as the National Heritage Fellowship. And his rising star band was even featured in the 2002 film, Gangs of New York. All that is to say, Otha took an old tradition and paved the new avenue from it. So when he died, I had to decide if I wanted to keep playing or stop. I decided to continue playing, so I started to take the band more seriously. We started by changing the name, adding an S to stars, because each band member has a musical background and was a rising star in their own way. We added more percussion, corpse-style drumming techniques, faster tempos, and a fresh look. We added more pop music to our library and started performing outside of the festival circuit at places like the Cognac Blues Passion and the grand opening of the National African American History and Culture Museum and on universal stages. The Rising Stars took off the turn of version of Glory Glory, which sounded like this. and we turned it into this. The fife and drum music you hear us play today preserves the traditional concept. It serves the same purpose but we have also stressed the genre, creating greater complexity. I am building on the love and the legacy of my grandfather Otha, but his music is still there with us during every performance. It is important to continue the legacy, the tradition, and continue creating new avenues for fife and drum music for the next generation. Thank you.
Oxford, Mississippi, it feels so good to be here. Thank you. These are my wonderful guys, the rising stars. <laughs> 